This episode is scripted by John Ruth and Newell Fisher and is narrated, recorded and edited by Newell Fisher. Hello and welcome to the Watership Down podcast episode 56 in which we will be looking at the concept of an Owsler in the 1972 novel as well as the 1978 film. First though I forgot to mention that last week's episode just about marked the first anniversary of this podcast This has taken me back to that day during the second lockdown last year when on a boring Monday afternoon that happened to be on the Ides of March or the 15th, I decided to start a podcast on a subject of interest to me. I have no doubt it was one of many podcasts started in lockdown, many of which I would guess have not survived. Well, I'm both proud and grateful that this one has. It is strange to recall that when this podcast started, it was illegal for me to travel to any of the places where the book is set due to Covid laws a situation I have never known before in my life. Hopefully such laws will not be needed again. One day I will record an episode standing on Wardship Down itself, and what a journey that will have been from those first hesitating words I spoke a year ago in my living room. During that year, the podcast has accumulated a regular audience of about 50, and over 6,000 downloads from 50 countries. I don't think that's too bad for such a niche, niche podcast. So, once again, thank you all for your continued support. Here's to the next year. What is an Owsler? An Owsler is an interesting concept and worthy of discussion. We haven't seen any references to how Richard Adams came up with it, but it gives some structure to any Warren. Without it, the only structure would be the Chief Rabbit. As a result, it is necessary to talk not only about the Owsler, but also about the position of Chief Rabbit. In Warship Down, it seems like any group of rabbits, even those of the Warren of the Snares, Cowslips Warren, come up with the Chief. The chief may, of course, nominate himself, and it seems like this is mostly through action. Hazel became chief rabbit simply based on his personality. It seems Woundwalk got to be a chief by killing the previous one, so by a hostile takeover. Who knows how Cowslip got to be a chief, but one might guess it was simply because he was the most in charge, and maybe also by being a survivor of sorts, which is ironic in that, Warren. Now, the chief can't do everything himself or herself, therefore we can assume that there are rabbits who will work for the chief based on what needs to be done. This is possible because rabbits are social animals, unlike hares. At one point, during Tales from Wardship Down, Heisenclay becomes co-chief rabbit with Hazel. They are also mated, and this is interesting. It might have been Adam's way of giving females more of a role, given how Wardship Down is sometimes looked at as being very male-centric. So, what needs to be done in a warren of talking rabbits that might require an Owsler? Most likely this would involve security and safety. A warren in the Richard Adams universe probably cannot thrive without these. And here is how the Owsler is born. It will be made up of rabbits who are strong enough, maybe big enough, maybe fast enough, and very likely brave enough to do what needs to be done. Scouting out areas around the warren, possibly finding new food sources, resisting invasion, and in some cases serving as the police, depending on the culture of each individual warren. Adams mentions in his footnotes that a good storyteller might find a place in an Owsler in some warrens, and definitely a seer such as Fiverr. In the world Warship Down is set in, where the supernatural is very real, this would definitely make sense. After all, they can literally warn you your warren is about to be destroyed in time to get away. Any time a group of rabbits form either a warren or simply a group of rabbits on the move, the idea of both a chief and an Owsler will probably more or less work themselves out. It's to the point that it is ingrained in rabbit culture. When Bigwig allows himself to be taken in by the Afrofans, he tells General Woundwort that he was an officer in an Owsler, knowing that this would be well understood. So, let's go through the four Owslers of Watership Down in order. Sandalford's Owsler In the original novel, the Sandalford Owsler seems to be the one that tolerates petty privileges for Owsler members, as in the incident where Toeflax won't let Fivery to cowslip as they are reserved for Owsler. And this pettiness, which may have evolved as the chief rabbit the Freyra has aged, is what gives Hazel the notion of leaving even before Fivery's premonition. It also seems to help drive Bigwig away, an Owsler member, and for that matter, Silver. But this Owsler is nowhere near as bad as that of Ephrafa. However, this changes in the 1978 film. When Captain Holly catches the group trying to leave Sandalford, it is worth paying attention to what he actually says. In the book, 
Holly is only concerned with the Owsler members Bigwig and Silver and lays out some pretty specific charges against them. The exact quote is, quote, Spreading dissension and inciting to mutiny. Silver, you're under arrest too for failing to report to Toadflax this evening and causing your duty to devolve on a comrade. You're both to come with me, end quote. He doesn't seem to be concerned with the rest of the group at all, until Hazel tells him he will be killed. They are probably just seen as young buck outskirters and not worth worrying about. But, in the 1978 film, the actions of the Owls are far harsher. The group that tries to leave is larger than in the novel, seemingly including does and maybe even some kittens, and most of them are immediately rounded up in a very military style and taken back to the Warren. Captain Holly then intercepts the remaining bucks and tells them they are all under arrest for, quote, spreading dissension, inciting to mutiny, end quote, before he has even seen Bigwig. This is at 1320 if you want to check it. So the Sandalford Owsler of the film seems to be far more like that of Ephrata. Was this just for dramatic effect? It certainly makes for some exciting music. The Warren of the Snares Owsler while the Owlsler of Ephrafa, which we will come on to, represents one extreme of the Owlsler spectrum, the Owlsler of the Warren of the Snares, or Cowslips Warren, seems to represent the other, mainly by not existing. Having said that, it seems that an ad hoc posse-like Owlsler can be raised fairly effectively when needed, as in when Holly's party escaping from Sandalford have the bad luck to bump into them. In fact, it is this Owlsler that is the only one in the book that kills a rabbit from Sandalford, the already sick Pimpernel. Overall, though, they probably wouldn't be able to stand up to any other Owlsler in the book, despite their individual size. This is a warren where leadership and discipline has ceased to matter a long time ago, and even their most dangerous actions are more motivated by their mass suicidal delusion than any desire for self-protection. Watership Downs, Owlsler we know that Bigwig was the chief of a, quote, very free and easy Owsler, end quote, at the end of Watership Down. However, when did it really form? We know that Hazel was the chief long before most rabbits added Ra to the end of his name. The Owsler also formed pretty early. As the rabbit who willingly swam the Enborn before everyone else crossed, we might say that Bigwig was the charter member. Silver and Buckthorn were the next members. Both had some size. Silver also had been a Sandalford Owsler member. And the group of three were reckoned as the fighters out of the group. At some point, other rabbits are members of this pre wardship down Owsler, but not very many and really based on function. For example, when Holly and Blackavar scout around wardship down and find that the Ephraphans are nearby, that is an Owsler action. Even the rabbits that accompanied Hazel, Hazel to the raid on Nuthanger could be considered Owsler members in a way. Again, the main point here, here is that the Owsler was more or less formed well before the group of Clessy arrived at wardship down. Interestingly, in Tales from Wardship Down, Hazel comments at one point, quote, we're all in the Owlsler, really, end quote. Which is strangely similar, you could say, to the Warren of the Snares, just coming at the concept from the opposite direction. That of knowing you do need one, but not being too bothered about the membership list. By the end of the novel, we see that the elderly chief, Hazel Ra, has the cent a sentry outside his burrow. This may indicate that the Warship Owlsler has become a little more formalised over the course of three or four years, but not too much. Hazel isn't bothered about the sentry not having noticed his... guest... Ephrafa's Owsler. A lot has already been said on this podcast about the nature of the Ephrafa and Owsler. In particular, check out episodes 25 and 30. But the unique structuring of the Ephrafa and Owsler merits a little more attention. It is the only Owsler in the book with more than one captain, each in charge of a mark or wide patrols in the case of Captain Campion. The implication of the name of the chief rabbit, General Windwart, seems to be that he is also the head of the Owsler. After all, this is a very militarised warren in which every rabbit is under orders. But Ephraim has another structure that is unique in the book, the dreaded council and their Owslaffer, or council police. Presumably this is a compound word, with the lapine for council being something like laffer or slaffer. The Owslaffer were a, a social construct of General Windwart, just as the council were. 
While General Woundwort is most certainly a bully and a tyrant, he is also very smart. The council take on some of the Chief Rabbit's roles and so free, up, free the Chief up to really concentrate on external security, training the Owsler and developing Owsler leaders, conducting wide patrols and the occasional invasion of other Warrens. The differences between the two security bodies are that the Owslaffer is mostly concerned with internal security. The Owsler is also concerned with this, but mainly when it comes to minding their own rabbits within each of the four marks, as well as the other functions just mentioned. So, in US and UK terms, you could say that the FRF and Owsler is a bit like the CIA or MI6, whereas the Owslaffer were more like the FBI or MI5. So an Owslaffer member would never have to worry about going on Y patrol. They serve in a more... Lo law enforcement police function as toadies for the council. On the other hand, a member of the, member of the Owlsler would not be given prisoner escort duty or find themselves working directly for the council, performing tasks. They may report to the council, as Campion did after the failed Watership Down invasion, or a mark captain might have to report to the council on a security matter in his mark. Woundwort is certainly smart with the contracts he comes up with. The system of marks, each mark having its own captain, the council and the council police. In Ephrafa, though, Warren Woundwort is really the king of the Warren. The council simply takes on certain governance tasks, and Ephrafa is certainly not a democracy. The council is not a representative body of each mark, or a primitive parliament, in other words. In fact, you could say it is more of a civil service, just a very frightening one. We also see that Woundwort can really get his own way, in spite of having a Warren council. Conclusion. So the Owslers of Watership Down run a spectrum of formality from least to most formal as follows. Warren of the Snares, Watership Down, Sandalford, Ephrafa. Overall, I think my preference is for the one formed on the way to and in Watership Down, but I may be a little biased. Next time, Watership Down and the Classics. Mm -hmm.